us a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. Take the exam first on your own before watching these step-by-step -step solutions. The link is in the description. Number two, the following pair of structures are, and again we have these options, identical, enantiomers, diastereomers, and constitutional isomers. We want to compare these structures in the same way. We have something in line notation, and then we have a Newman projection. You can go either way. We could convert the line notation to a Newman projection, but I think we're used to looking at molecules in line notation, so why don't we go ahead and convert the Newman projection to line notation. What we want to do here is clearly we are looking at a butane we have this methyl down and this methyl up in the back. That's these two right here. Now, what else do we have? In order to look at this Newman projection, what we're really doing is we're looking down this bond right here. If we were to do that, what would we see? Well, if we see the bromine going up and to the left, that means that that must be on the dash bond here because the dash bond is going to the left. It's going past the screen and then we have the implied hydrogen up and to the right. Then on the back carbon here, that's where these bonds are stemming from the edge of the circle because they're obscured. That chloro group is going down and to the right, so that must be on a wedge bond here. We have just converted that Newman projection to line notation. Now we want to compare what we see with the first structure. So over here we have the bromo group on the wedge, and on this structure we have it on the dash. And then for the chloro group, we have it on the dash, and over here we have it on a wedge. And so what we have done is we have inverted the stereochemistry at each of the chiral centers. We have two chiral centers, and we have inverted the stereochemistry, and these are two different functional groups, so there's no way that we can rotate the second one to get back the first one. They cannot be identical because they are different groups. Since we have inverted the stereochemistry at all of the stereocenters, we have gotten the mirror image. That is the enantiomer. Once again, if we had inverted the stereochemistry at only one of the stereocenters and not the other one, that would be diastereomers. And then it can't be constitutional isomers because all of the connectivity is the same. If we had moved the chloro group, let's say, to the terminal carbon instead of the second one, then that would be a different constitutional isomer. But these are clearly stereoisomers, and in this case, they are enantiomers. Three asks, the following pair of structures are... Are they identical, enantiomers, diastereomers, or constitutional isomers? So what do we have here? We definitely have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six carbon molecule. Both of them are six carbon molecules. We have two chloro groups, and we want to try to understand the relationship here. Over here, it looks like it's the second and fourth carbon from the left. On the right side, we have the second and fourth carbon from the right, which is where these chloro groups are. This is where a little bit of spatial understanding comes into play. One way to look at this is if we take that structure on the left, and it's as though we pick it up and flip it over to the other side, just as though it was a piece of paper and we flip it over onto the other side of the paper, we will get this structure. This is the same thing. What happens is because we had chloro groups on the wedges, if we flip it to the other side, they will now be on the dashes. What was pointing out towards us, when you flip it over, will be pointing the other way. And then this edge methyl on the right there is now over there on the left. These are identical. The other way you could do it is to just go ahead and assign the absolute configuration by kahn ingold prelog convention, and you would see that the R's and the S's match up. So you can assign R and S to every stereocenter, see that they end up the same, and then that's another way that you can see that those are identical. But they are not enantiomers, they're not mirror images, they're not diastereomers, because it is not the case that only one of the stereocenters has changed, and they're not constitutional isomers, the connectivity is the same. The easiest way to do this is to just envision flipping the molecule over onto the other side, seeing that you do get that other structure, and so these are identical. Four asks, the following pair of structures are identical, enantiomers, diastereomers, and constitutional isomers. So we have some straight chain alkanes with bromo groups on them. And why don't we go ahead and number these parent chains? So on the left, which direction would we number this? We would start from the right and we would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is an octane. And then on the right, this one we would number from left to right because that will give the bromine occurring soonest. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So where are the bromo groups 
Over here, they're on carbons three and five. And then on the other structure, they're on carbons two and four. So these are actually completely different molecules. These are not stereoisomers. These are constitutional isomers. They have different connectivity. Remember that stereoisomers have all the same connectivity. They just differ in the way that the groups are oriented in three-dimensional space. So if we had the bromo groups on the same carbons, but dashes became wedges and wedges became dashes, those would be stereoisomers. But here, the bromo groups are on completely different carbons. So these are different constitutional isomers. Five asks, how many stereoisomers are possible for the following compound? We need to understand that this depends on how many stereocenters there are on the compound. For example, if you have one chiral center, that chiral center can be R or it can be S. And then if you have two chiral centers, now we have more possibilities. So what the formula is, is two to the N. The number of chiral centers N, you take two and raise it to that power, and that's how many stereoisomers are possible. How many chiral centers do we have? Well, we have one right here. There's that bromine, the implied hydrogen, and then the two directions of the ring. We have one right here as well, because we have this substituent and then the two directions of the ring as well as the implied hydrogen. And then this also is a chiral center because that chlorine can be on the dash or the wedge, and that will be different because we've got chlorine, hydrogen, methyl, and then the rest of the molecule. So if we have three chiral centers, then we're saying that's two to the three equals eight. RRR, SSS, every combination therein. And so we do have eight possibilities. That will be D8. Number six asks, which of the following compounds is a meso compound? A meso compound is a compound that has chiral centers, but is achiral or not chiral overall because of an internal plane of symmetry. If there is a line that you can draw down the middle of the molecule and one half of the molecule reflects across that mirror plane to give you the other half of the molecule, that is a meso compound. So certainly these all have two substituents in the same places, but they're different substituents and they're oriented differently. So let's go ahead and draw what could potentially be a mirror plane down the center of each of these molecules. And which one of these does accurately give us the other half of the molecule when you reflect one half across the mirror plane? So looking at option A, we've got bromine over there and then we've got chlorine over there. So if you reflect this half across, the bromine will land on the chlorine, and that's no good. Those are not the same atoms, so that doesn't work. Looking at C, it's the same. We've got bromine, and then we also have chlorine again. That's not going to work. We need the same atoms. Each atom has to reflect across to give the same atom. Looking at D, we have bromine, and if we reflect across, we do have bromine, but that is on a dash instead of a wedge. So stereochemically, that doesn't work. B does work, right? We have bromine there. If we reflect this entire half of the molecule across this mirror plane, we do get exactly the same thing. We have a bromine on a wedge over there as well. B is the meso compound because it has an internal plane of symmetry. Seven asks, which of the following compounds is optically active? Optically active is another way of saying that something is chiral. If a molecule is chiral,